Trump was completely denied any such opportunity. And it turns out there is significant reason to doubt the evidence the House managers have put before us. Let me say this clearly. We have reason to believe the House managers manipulated evidence and selectively edited footage. If they did, and this were a court of law, they would face sanctions from the judge. I don't raise this issue lightly. Rather, it is a product of what we have found in just the limited time we have had since we first saw the evidence here with you this week. We have reason to believe that the House managers created false representations of tweets, and the lack of due process means there was no opportunity to review or verify the accuracy. Consider these facts. The House managers, proud of their work on the SNAP impeachment, staged numerous photo shoots of their preparations. In one of those, Manager Raskin is seen here at his desk reviewing two tweets side by side. The image on his screen claims to show that President Trump had retweeted one of those tweets. Now, members of the Senate, let's look closely at this screen, because obviously Manager Raskin considered it important enough that he invited the New York Times to watch him watching it. Now, what's wrong with this image? Actually, there are three things very wrong with it. Look at the date on the very bottom of the screen on Manager Raskin's computer screen when we zoom in to the picture. The date that appears is January 3rd, 2020, not 2021. Why is that date wrong? Because this is not a real screenshot that he's working with. This is a recreation of a tweet, and you got the date wrong when you manufactured this graphic. You did not disclose that this is a manufactured graphic and not a real screenshot of a tweet. Now, to be fair, the House managers caught this error before showing the image on the Senate floor. So you never saw it when it was presented to you. But that's not all. They didn't fix this one. Look at the blue check mark next to the Twitter username of the account retweeted by the President. It indicates that this is a verified account given the blue check by Twitter to indicate it is run by a public figure. The problem? The user's real account is not verified and has no blue check mark, as you can see. Were you trying to make her account seem more significant, or were you just sloppy? If we had due process of law in this case, we would know the truth. But that's not all that's wrong with this one tweet. House Manager Swalwell showed you this tweet this week, and he emphasized that this tweet reflected a call to arms. He told you repeatedly that this was a promise to call in the cavalry for January 6th. He expressly led you to believe that President Trump's supporter believed that the President wanted armed supporters at the January 6th speech, paramilitary groups, the cavalry, ready for physical combat. The problem is, the actual text is exactly the opposite. The tweeter promised to bring the Calvary, a public display of Christ's crucifixion, a sem central symbol of her Christian faith, with her to the President's speech, a symbol of faith, love, and peace. They just never want to seem to read the text and believe what the text means. And you'll see this reported in the media last evening also. Words matter, they told you, but they selectively edited the President's words over and over again. They manipulated video, time-shifting clips, and made it appear the President's words were playing to a crowd when they weren't. Let's take a look. After this, we're going to walk down, and I'll be there with you. We're going to walk down. We're going to walk down to the Capitol. You want, but I think right here, we're going to walk down to the Capitol. And we're going to cheer on our brave senators and congressmen and women. And we're probably not going to be cheering so much for some of them. Because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. We have come to demand that Congress do the right thing 
and only count the electors who have been lawfully slated. Lawfully slated. I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. And we are going to walk down to the Capitol. They showed you that part. Why are we walking to the Capitol? Well, they cut that off. To cheer on some members of Congress, and not others, peacefully and patriotically. The Supreme Court ruled in Brandenburg that there's a very clear standard for incitement. In short, to paraphrase, whether the speech was intended to provoke imminent lawless action, and was it likely to do so. Go to the Capitol and cheer on some members of Congress, but not others. They know it doesn't meet the standard for incitement, so they edited it down. We heard a lot this week about fight like hell, but they cut off the video before they showed you the president's optimistic, patriotic words that followed immediately after. We fight like hell, and if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. Our exciting adventures and boldest endeavors have not yet begun. My fellow Americans, for our movement, for our children, and for our beloved country, and I say this, despite all that's happened, the best is yet to come. There's that famous quote, like one of the House managers said, a lie will travel halfway around the world before the truth has a chance to put its shoes on. Well, this lie traveled around the world a few times, made its way into the Biden campaign talking points, and ended up on the Senate floor. The Charlottesville lie. Very fine people on both sides. Except that isn't all he said. And they knew it then, and they know it now. Watch this. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group, excuse me, excuse me, I saw the same pictures as you did. You had people in that group that were there to protest the taking down of, to them, a very, very important statue and the renaming of a park from Robert E. Lee to another name. George Washington was a slave owner. Was George Washington a slave owner? So will George Washington now lose his status? Are we going to take down, excuse me, are we going to take down, are we going to take down statues to George Washington? How about Thomas Jefferson? What do you think of Thomas Jefferson? You like him? Okay, good. Are we going to take down the statue? Because he was a major slave owner. Now, are we going to take down his statue? So you know what? It's fine. You're changing history. You're changing culture. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? And the press has treated them absolutely unfairly. Now, in the other group also, you had some fine people, but you also had troublemakers, and you see them come with the, with the black outfits, and with the helmets, and with the baseball bats. You, got a, you had a lot of bad, you had a lot of bad people in the other group, too. Who was treated unfairly, sir? I'm sorry, I just didn't understand what you were saying. You were saying the press has treated white nationalists unfairly? No, I just didn't understand what you were saying. No. There were people in that rally, and I looked the night before. If you look, they were people protesting very quietly the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. I'm sure in that group there were some bad ones. The following day, it looked like they had some rough, bad people, neo-Nazis, uh, white nationalists, whatever you want to call them. But you had a lot of people in that group that were there to innocently protest and very legally protest because, you know, I don't know if you know, they had a permit. The other group didn't have a permit. So I only tell you this, there are two sides to a story. I thought what took place was a horrible moment for our country, a horrible moment. But there are two sides to the country. Does anybody have a final? Does anybody have, you have an infrastructure. What makes you think? This might be today the first time the news networks played those full remarks in their context. And how many times have you heard that President Trump has never denounced white supremacists? Now you in America know the truth. Here's another example. One of the House managers made much of the President's supposedly ominous words of, you have to get your people to fight. 
But you knew what the President really meant. He meant that the crowd should demand action from members of Congress and support primary challenges to those who don't do what he considered to be right. Support primary challenges, not violent action. I know what he meant because I watched the full video, and so did the House managers, but they manipulated his words. You will see where they stopped it, and to give it a very different meaning from the meaning it has in full context. Let's watch. You have to get your people to fight. He told them. You have to get your people to fight. And if they don't fight, we have to primary the hell out of the ones that don't fight. You primary them. We're going we're gonna to let you know who they are. I can already tell you, frankly. The people who need to fight are members of Congress. Why did we have to skip the necessary due diligence and due process of law and any le that any legal proceeding should have? It couldn't have been the urgency to get President Trump out of office. House Democrats held the articles until he was no longer president, mooting their case. Hatred, animosity, division, political gain. And let's face it, for House Democrats, President Trump is the best enemy to attack. Madam Speaker, I came here today to speak on behalf of women and the parents of my district. Heck, honestly, I came to speak on behalf of all Americans who want their kids to be safe and secure in their schools and for people to be safe in their communities. I came here today to say that we all want these things because our hearts collectively break when any life is lost. We mourn for those lives lost needlessly. We need to do better and we can do better which is why every single member of this chamber must, without hesitation, denounce, decline, and decide and oppose against H.R. 7910, the Politics Over Our Kids Act. This is common sense. Taking legal firearms out of the hands of law-abiding citizens does nothing but empower criminals. It's already illegal to commit murder. Has that stopped murder? Has that stopped violence? No. Madam Speaker, you said in your opening remarks that, quote, protecting our kids, what could be more important than that? You said, quote, we are here for the children. You went on to say that, quote, everything we do is for the children and that today's effort to strip our constitutional rights is, quote, a crusade for children. You must have forgotten the nearly 60 million children that have been murdered through some of the most horrific means during an abortion all on your watch. You invoke JFK and say that our children are our best resource and our best hope for the future. Is that so? Why do you deny them their future by killing them in the womb? Sounds a bit hypocritical if you ask me. And you also made the statement that the leading cause of death for children is firearms. Then why does the data refute that? NBC News reported that motor vehicle deaths of kids from age 1 to 17 continues to be the number one cause of death. Spare me, Madam Speaker, that you are here fighting for the children because your three decades in Congress reflect a re record of anything but a fight for children. Certainly not the kids being trafficked at the border, not the kids being abused, not the kids fighting for their life in the womb, or the kids whose future is being stolen by abusive big government policies. If this were about protecting kids, then why does this bill do nothing to secure or harden our schools? Why was there no bipartisan efforts as part of this package? Why do these bills do nothing to address the mental health crisis that we are facing, driving the violence? It is the guns. It is not the guns. It is the people. People who are intent on committing acts of evil and violence will do so by any means necessary. That is a fact. But while you have conveniently forgotten so much, I certainly do not want to forget how many victims of domestic violence will be left without options to protect themselves if this garbage bill becomes law. Because it's the same party screaming to defund our police is the same party screaming about how you, a law-abiding citizen, should not be able to defend yourself. Finally, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that you have clearly all forgotten your oath an oath that we took here on this chamber floor to uphold and defend the United States Constitution. The Second Amendment is a part of that. Madam Speaker and to all my colleagues, the Constitution is not a la carte. General you can either accept expired. it all or none of it. Ge but you General cannot cherry pick expired. it. And if you can't un un hold, uphold your oath, then you should General resign with that I yield back. And all members are reminded once again to address their remarks to the chair. Gentleman from New York. Madam